great to see you. Once again, I am actually now introducing another part of an occasional offline series in which I am meeting accomplished people who are talking about their lives and their careers and their inspirations, and at the same time also a little bit about offline. And I'm delighted to say that today I am being joined by Hannah Shergold, a very talented artist who will be talking a little bit about her work and indeed her association with the Born Free Foundation. So, Hannah, here we are. Thank you. A very successful private view the other day, in which indeed Virginia McKenna, who is one of the founders of the Born Free Foundation, was here to talk about her work. Tell us a little bit about, obviously, how you came to meet her, and obviously your connection with the organization, and indeed the art you have created for this show. Well, I uh, did a, some fundraising for the Invictus Games last year, and this year I was looking to fundraise for a conservation charity. So I approached Will Travers, who's the president of the Born Free Foundation and son of Virginia McKenna. I approached him in December and said, I'd like to fundraise for your charity. I picked them because I'd been to a talk by Gordon Buchanan, um, who is no, the naturalist, and the naturalist yeah, um, filmmaker. He'd done a wonderful talk in Winchester and he had spoken very highly about the Born Free Foundation and about the fact that they weren't just fundraisers, they were real frontline doers. They used the money very efficiently that they were able to get their hands on. So I approached Will Travers and uh, I offered to partner my solo exhibition in London with their foundation and raise money for them, which they were delighted about. But it also gave a focus for me to, for what I was going to paint. And so I started the collection in January and spent four months uh, painting it. And the theme was all wildlife and with a Did you have an affinity with wildlife, particularly before Born Free came into your life? Were you well, recreating images I, as well? I've had a, a very convoluted career path, which started my passion from uh, very young, was that I was going to be a vet. So. I actually went to vet school at, at Cambridge University, and so my, my passion for animals has, has been lifelong, really. Interesting. Mm. So obviously you, as you say, have taken a convoluted path, mm. because clearly you started to become a veterinarian at university, mm. then along the way you became a sculptor in bronze. I did. And having actually established that, you then decided to become an army helicopter pilot. Yes. Which is, I have to say, by all reasonable measures, quite a significant mm. uh, step mm. out of your comfort zone. What was the inspiration behind that? Well, the, the triggers for change have been a mixture, really, of either not being satisfied with what I'm doing at the time and wanting to change it, or forced change. The change from veterinary into sculpture was that I wasn't content with what I was doing. I was really passionate about doing art and more of it, and so I moved into sculpture then. But the sculpture business ran into the 2008 credit crunch and it just, it didn't survive. So frankly, I, I needed a job. And I was at a stage where I could have either used my Cambridge degree and gone for a job in the city, or I could do something completely off the wall at an age where I was still able to do it. Uh, and so I decided to join the army. But did you start thinking, I want to actually be flying? Or did you think, I want to simply be in an organization which will challenge me? technician places or... It was a you... mixture of both, really. I, I have a habit, I think, of applying for things because it's the most difficult thing you can possibly do. And I was very conscious that I wanted to make sure I wasn't just going for flying because it was the hardest thing you could get into. So I made myself choose three different um, corps or, or regiments within the army that I would be really happy with, one of which my first choice was uh, the Army Air Corps to be able to fly. So I, when I went into Sandhurst, I knew what I wanted to do, but if I didn't get it, then I knew there were other things that I'd be able to, to go for as well. Now, bearing in mind, obviously, you, as you say, went right out of your comfort zone. Mm. What did you learn most of all about yourself, having actually left the army? Having left the army, um, I think I'm, I do quite a lot of reading about psychology and I find it in a sort of non-arrogant way I find myself 
um, fascinating in the, in the way that I process things and I, I, I get a lot of things wrong and what I like reading about is why I make those decisions and why I keep doing certain things and how I can stop making bad decisions and I've, as an example I suppose I the, the pilot training attracts a certain type of personality tend to be um, very logical very direct and sometimes particularly working in the art field that doesn't work if I was going to ask you about the art because obviously you're talking about you know, your thought process yeah. and making mistakes along the way. So when you became a fully fledged artist and mm. left the army, did you find you took some of that army training into the artistic process as well? Not necessarily into the artistic process, but into the business side of running an art business. I, I, I've, I'm slightly more, some people are very sciencey or very arty. I'm, I'm sort of half and half, but they don't mix at the same time. I give myself four months to do full-on painting and then I'll stop painting and use the sciencey bit to do all of the show prep, event prep um, and really you know delve into the, the marketing and the PR so that the show can be as successful as it possibly can be and I do my reading on that as well you know my, and a lot of research so I Although I, I use both sides of the brain, as it were, they don't really mix at the same time. 